You're listening to Fit Pro Sessions with Parallel Coaching, episode number 27. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. In today's podcast, myself and Haley are talking all things posture. We're going to talk about learning to read the clues will help solve the problem. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. And I'm Haley Bergman. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands of fitness professionals to get qualified, learn with simplicity and coach clients with confidence. We're the first to say that learning and being a fit pro doesn't have to be hard work and that with the right structure, support and resources, you can become a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional that is dedicated to more. So how do you learn, qualify and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching. So if you watched the last episode, episode number 26, you'd have realised, or maybe if you watched it on YouTube, (laughs) you'd see that I'm wearing the exact same jumper. That's because I just recorded it. (laughs) (laughs) But Hayley did decide to change and she took her jumper off. Here we go. So let's jump into today's podcast, which is all about posture. So um, whether you're newly qualified, qualifying or um, a veteran fitness professional, whether you're in Pilates, fitness, uh, yoga, ETM, personal trainer, it really doesn't matter. Today's all about understanding uh, posture all about posture and this is so so key so posture technique everything about how you observe your client can really change you as a fit pro in terms of the standard that you're offering um so i want you to think what you mean it's not okay to stand next to your client not move and just look at your mobile phone the entire bloody session (laughs) don't think it really benefits the client much (laughs) <laughs> that's an interesting approach <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think everybody would say that if they had the tools to be able to understand more about their client then they would do it um, it feels like the good thing to do rather than ignore them um, and the, really the, pr- the problem that a lot of people have as fit pros is that in terms of the problem um, your client might have back pain might have um, pain in various places but you might not the the problem might not but clearly we have an issue connecting brain to mouth today i think what Haley's is trying to say the client might have back pain but the problem might the not be the might root not actually be there back. okay i <laughs> We will lose it sometimes. I think you lost it ages ago. I lost it. I I lost it. I like to use this analogy. I actually had a client this morning um, that does experience low back pain. And he was saying that he'd been to a physio and he was talking all about the low back. And I used this analogy of the plant pot. I might have used this on the Fit Pro sessions before. If I had a plant uh, that was um, dying and it was on the windowsill, uh, what could I do? And I'll ask you this for a question. So you could, you know, quickly rattle through them. What could you do? If, if you knew uh, the plant was dying, what could you do? I'll deadhead ask it. I could deadhead it. You could water it. I could water it. Um, move it? I could move it. So I could take it from one windowsill, uh, maybe, and put it in on a more different light. way with more light. Yeah. Um, I could repot it. Oh, more soil. I could give it a bigger pot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not very good with plants. I could feed it. Clearly, we don't have many plants in the house. <laughs> Okay, but I could do lots of things with it. But what a lot of people do uh, that don't understand, like Haley, about um, uh, plants that are, that are dying, they'll just go straight to, well, I'll deadhead it. I'll take off what I can see as the, the cause. Which, in my case of planting, has often led to me just killing the whole plant. Where Completely. I've cut all the back. So the point <laughs> here is if I just, if I got low back pain, if I just focused on the low back, and observe just for low back, then the low back doesn't actually get any better. Yeah. I don't know why I'm holding my low back. (laughs) 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 Okay, so again, so if I have got a a shoulder niggle and I just focus on the the niggle of the shoulder, it doesn't necessarily mean that the shoulder's gonna get any better. So your analogy here is that, like the plant pot, you I need, need to, to know. I need to think outside the box, and, I and need you're to know only what's gonna going to on. know the root cause of it if you can gather some clues. So I want you to think like a murder mystery novel. Dum dum dum. That would do. I like that. <laughs> we or should like, insert some murder or, mystery or music. Like Cluedo here. or whatever it used to be. Um, but these. I've mur- never played Cluedo. Maybe not. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> so it's kind of <laughs> like a murder mystery novel. Imagine walking into the room to solve the problem and you've got all these clues everywhere and all these different clues in this room are things that will help you understand what the problem or what the root cause was. So 
in a murder mystery or Cluedo, you'd walk into the library and see a knife. A knife. A, the candlestick. The candlestick. And then a couple of suspects. What a we're footprint. doing yeah. is we're walking into a client session and seeing a a an, an ankle that twisted on a cobble whilst running or uh, you moved awkwardly getting something out of a washing machine. Well, that's what they're saying. Oh, OK, cool. But you can also, your room of clues includes every single posture compensation that your client has. So it could be that my dodgy left knee could be my rhomboids. Yes, exactly. But you wouldn't know Boom. it unless you look. Murder solved, mystery solved. <laughs> and it takes time. <laughs> so my main oh, point okay. here is that every single posture compensation, every joint that's out of alignment, every tight muscle, every weak muscle, every past injury, every point of pain, every weight shift, everything is a clue. Cool. At level two, you need to understand and learn 26 muscles. And at level three, you've got to learn 50 muscles. But the yep. body, in fact, has over 650 muscles. Yeah. Now, I'm going to break that down really, really, really simple and say the body is just one muscle. Oh, nice. So if I pull on my um, gastroc, lower leg, <laughs> below the knee. Calf. <laughs> Calf. Okay. And that can affect my bicep. Because what, when I pull on that, I can move the whole skeletal system and therefore pull on that muscle as well. Yes. So if I have, in this murder mystery analogy, if I have a dodgy left knee, that will affect my knee, my left hip, therefore my pelvis, my lumbar. Your shoulders. My shoulder and, and, and neck so alignment, on. Completely everything. amazing. And you can unpick all the clues. And the possibility is that as a PT or a coach, you're basically, like, like Neil said at the beginning, hopefully you're not just standing next to your clients all day long, just going, oh, that's nice. That was a great notification like, like for my mate. I go for a Pizza Hut buffet at lunch. No. <laughs> <laughs> or yeah, oh, on their phone, on their like, phone. <laughs> and, or they're wearing nice trousers today or whatever it might be instead you can actually observe with the intention of looking for clues and then the idea is that as a great opportunity for you as a PT just find a method of writing this down because it won't stay in your head and you're not going to find massive clues they're the little clues are what counts small just like in murder swing, mystery small hinges swing big doors exactly just like in murder mystery it's the smallest clues that give away the answer so you you're, this is when i was like i don't know Never played it. <laughs> it sounds fun though i like it so it's a really good opportunity so make sure you take in a notepad and pen or you write it on an ipad or whatever i think this is a uh, step in the side i think this is where a lot of fit pros potentially f find it tricky now mm. because I take it for granted that on our courses, we spend a, a serious amount of time in the gym. Yes. Okay, so level two gym is four days. Uh, PT is like seven or eight days. All told, the diploma is like 11 or 12 days plus kettlebells. Okay, so by the time they've, they've left us, it's almost, it, it, it's gold standard that you're walking around observing because it's it's like drilled into them. But if you're on a course that doesn't have much attendance, you've not had a great deal yeah. of time to to be told, be shown, be taught, and to practice observation. Okay, and that's not your fault. But it just it, might be new. But it is just new. So it doesn't matter whether you're in a gym with a client or you're at home with your kids. It doesn't matter where you are. You could do this while sitting in your car at traffic lights. Is looking at people and imagining that your eyes are an x-ray machine. Yes. So when you, when you see the person, your best mate, your work colleague, your child, and you see them from the side, try and have an x-ray machine and see, right, what's happening at the ankle in relation to the knee, the knee in relation to the hip, the hip in relation to the spine, and then the spine in relation to the ankle. I mean, if I walk around the front, what's happening with the two feet? Where are they in relation to each other? The two knees, where are they in relation? and so on. And that x-ray, like you were doing there, there's two parts to it. One is comparing it to like what you'd expect it to normally look like. And that's why you have to learn A and P out of the manual, or well, not out of the manual, but you have to learn A and P in the first place because exactly. we have to understand what the anatomical positions are. What's the normal position? What's the normal, normal position? And then the second part is to compare left and right. So the left foot might turn out more than the right foot. And you're like, oh, I didn't notice that before. Yes, completely. Um, so they're like the two bits that you can grab And now these an are the small hinges, ninja clues yes. in Cluedo, 
where you go, right, so my left foot, my client's left foot externally rotates a little bit more than the right foot. What muscles cause external rotation of the leg? So I could go, well, it could be my lateral gastroc, it could be uh, one of my hamstrings, it could be TFL. my TFL, it could be my IT band, it could be my piriformis, it could be my glute medius. <laughs> And you start yes. to know these because you pick up all the other little clues along the way as and, well. And you might think, you know, I, I found that quite easy to reel off then, but I've repeated it so many times. So if you are struggling with muscles and joint actions, repetition is the mother of all skill. Yes. So, which is why you can practice this all the time. You're at home and your kid's sitting in a certain way and you're thinking, well, why is his arm doing that or her leg doing this? Go back to the manual. Oh, it's abduction. Oh, it's that muscle. And it's only through doing that it becomes second nature. And awesome. you pick up these x-ray clues. Yes. And when you're saying about x-ray clues, when you're in that session with your client, in fact, try it on your next PT session or coaching session, you're with your client and you're watching them. And maybe in the first session, you see that they, um, that when they're walking, their left foot turns out. And then you just jot it down and then you go over to the bench press and before you know it, you're like, oh, that left leg's hanging out again. Something that I found really useful, not just jotting down, was an app on the phone. I think I paid about seven or eight pounds for it. It was called Coach's Eye. So I could take photos and slow the, the videos down to like one hundredth of a second and see exactly what's Perfect. going on. And to do this over a long period of time, the, the problem that most people have when we say about this, they just do it the once. Yeah. So they just look in one action. They just look in one time a day in just one session. And obviously they might have maybe been in the car driving for five hours before yeah. you saw them That's today. That's a great point. So do it over lot, multiple days. Build up this bank of clues it won't be immediately apparent it's not like they'll have a flag on them that says they've got tight chest <laughs> so i've got I've, I've got a one to one client this evening and whenever i do have this client of an evening or he has a desk job he's always saying about his mid back upper traps ache and yeah. he's been sat at a desk he's an accountant of course he's, he's like, going to but anytime we do a morning session or a weekend session it's not there oh interesting another little clue yeah so you just build up these clues write them all down and then like neil was saying a minute ago he could rattle off what muscles might be tight because of that so all these clues build up and you can start to basically analyze this and and it comes back to knowing and why a and p is important because it's not now now i know for example my client's foot externally rotates and my lateral gastroc tfl hamstring and piriformis are responsible for that, I now know that those are maybe overactive, overused, or are tighter muscles. Yes. Now I know that I've got to put some kind of, at very least a maintenance stretch, but a yeah. developmental stretch, and maybe some PNF or partner assisted stretching in on those muscles. Yes. And then muscles work in pairs, which we know that are level two. So what is the antagonist to the hamstrings? Quad. The quads. Okay, so if the hamstrings are tight and overactive, the quads might be weaker, weaker and underactive. Yeah. So now I've got a massive, massive clarity on why I've chosen a quad exercise over a hamstring exercise or why I've made it a quad dominant session and less on the hamstrings awesome point because actually people struggle with planning yeah so if you're planning <laughs> planning we are, are so much about but planning isn't guesswork planning is going into the murder mystery house okay and picking up all of these clues on consultation one a body mot the first couple of sessions and analyzing exactly what's going on yeah so now planning is no longer a guesswork you can categorically say, I'm doing X because of X. Yes. My client presents me with this, and therefore I'm doing that. In alignment with their goal. Yeah, perfect. So rather than just say, right, my client's goal is just weight loss, I'm now actually working towards improved health, improved posture, towards weight loss. And if someone moves better, they're going to have less, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Less 
Their body's going to be less irritated. Yes, less stress. There's going to be less stress. That's the word. There's going to be less stress. There's going to be less stress on joints. They're going to have less back pain, less shoulder pain, upper back pain, whatever it might be. And they'll get more out of their goals anyway. Which now means with no more niggles, there's going to be no more excuses not to train. Yes. And when we feel good, we feel good. We act in a much better way. Nice. Simple. So, so I have an invitation for you. Wow. Didn't... That will really, really help you. Cool. And this is if you are listening to what we're saying about squat assessments, uh, sorry, any sort of analysis of your I client. Think, let's just pause it there. I think the squat analysis or squat assessment is the gold standard. I think so. A lot of compensations are pr seen in a squat or a lunge pattern. But what I know, like most about the squat analysis is that technically the, the chart for it, you could use when they're walking, you could use anywhere. Yeah. It's the same things. So we basically have put together a squat analysis that has a protocol and the results. So you know when Neil was saying, if their foot turns out, it could be this muscle, this muscle, this muscle. I'm going to give it a different analogy. What this document is, it's like walking into the murder mystery house mm. and I will give you the exact route to the exact room with the very clue that solves the murder. Oh, nice. It's got <laughs> so, the answer. So it's, rather than guessing and going, oh, I've got to go to the library. Oh, it wasn't Mary Poppins with a candlestick. I'll go up here. No, it wasn't the, the butler with a knife. I'm just going to say, right, go up the staircase, turn left, third door on the right, go inside. It was the squat assessment. Hey, there you go. There you go. Um, Cheesy. And, <laughs> and um, we've basically put this within 33 other documents in our Fit Pro Startup Kit. So if you haven't already grabbed our Fit Pro Startup Kit, um, it's on an introductory yeah, rate at the, the link, moment. The link's the link below. Will be with so this. documents such as, you know, the beauty of this is, I'm going to say I, but we, we have done the heavy lifting for you. So you get 34 documents that you can download instantly to Word, uh, and then I or Excel or PowerPoint, you can then add your logo. We even highlight all the areas of yellow uh, so you can go and change specific parts to make them your own so you can brand them very quickly. But now you've got all of the crux documents to get going very, very quickly and not have to scour the web or download something from somewhere else and another thing from another person and have a par cube that looks different to your consent form or what your doctor's form looks like. You've got 34 documents or forms and templates for you to instantly make your own. Perfect. Boom. Um, yep, but so I prefer the analogy of murder mystery. I'll just tell you the... We'll I'll, just tell you the answers. Just tell the answers. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> there you go. That's what it's for. But I think the crux of it, this, this whole fit pro session has been, if I could summarise it, you are a walking human x-ray machine. Always gathering clues. Always gathering clues. And it's those clues that give you the feedback or the answers to what's tight in the body muscles, what muscles are weak in the body and what's happening across a joint. So muscles cross a joint. So if a muscle's tight, it's playing havoc with that joint. Yeah. Now I know what to do, whether to strengthen or stretch. And you become an expert like that. And you know exactly why you've planned stuff. Yes, you've got method to your madness. So. There we go. Any questions, do reach out. If you're not inside our Facebook Inner Circle, the link's below. Come and join us in there. We're in there every day hanging out. Uh, yep. If you're watching on iTunes, as always, drop us a five-star review. It does help us push up the charts and more fit pros to uh, reach, which means we help more people, which is our ultimate goal. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit subscribe and drop a comment below. And we will see you on the next Fit Pro Sessions. See you later. Yeah, bye. Hi, I'm Neil Bergman. And I'm Hayley Bergman. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands of fitness professionals to get qualified, learn with simplicity, and coach clients with confidence. We're the first to say that learning and being a fit pro doesn't have to be hard work, and that with the right structure, support, and resources, you can become a confident and knowledgeable fitness professional that is dedicated to more. So how do you learn, qualify, and kickstart as a fit pro? This is the Fit Pro Sessions podcast with Parallel Coaching.